guys. Today on the Cool Stuff Guys Like channel, I'm going to talk about my modified Harbor Freight MIG welder. Um, so when you buy this thing, there's a lot of a lot left to be desired, maybe, but the price is right. Um, you can get these things on sale for like 60 or 70 bucks. So for that price, you can't really go wrong. Um, but right out of the box, there's probably a couple things you're going to want to do to really greatly improve this thing. Um, the very first thing and really easy thing to do is just get some better wire. Um, this is some um, 35 thousandths flux core. Um, I N E is the brand, which I is pretty reasonable stuff. You can get it on like Amazon.com, and it works pretty good actually. Um, the next thing is they come with a little nozzle around the tip here. Which doesn't really make any sense because this is flux core. There's not actually any shield shielding gas flowing around here, so um, really it just kind of gets in the way um, and kind of pre prevents you from really getting the tip where you need to get it. So um, maybe the maybe this is actually the first thing you should do is just pop that little nozzle off, so you're just left with a a tip sticking out there. Um, the third thing, so those two things are going to get you really pretty far pretty quick. The, the third thing is this ground clamp is like straight up ridiculous. This thing is like terrible. Can't even believe you put this on a welder. So um, I put one of these little, it's a little 200 amp like Tweco copy. It's got a really, really super tight spring in it. Really tight. And it's got, um, it's like a brass copper mix. So it'll really help you get some, some good contact when you're welding. So if you did those three things, you've probably about doubled the, the performance on this thing. Um, but that being said, there's still some room for improvement. So this thing is a AC flux core MIG welder. Um, and what that means is basically it's just a transformer in a box with a couple pickoffs on it and a little spool feed. Um, so every, um, you know, every second this, the actual tip and the workpiece are flipping polarities. And what that does is creates really a lot of like splatter and it, it's not the best case scenario for welding. So with any of the nicer flux core MIG welders you could buy, like if you bought a Lincoln or a Miller or Hobart, um, they're all going to be DC. So direct current instead of alternating current. Um, and they're also going to be electrode negative. So that's something you can do um, reasonably easy. And I did it on this welder. Um, and I'll take it apart in a minute. But here, I'll, I'll kind of show you. Well, first, I'll, I'll pop the side panel off here. So. All right, so we've got the side cover off here, and I can show you what, what you really need to do um, to convert this thing to direct current instead of alternating current, and explain a little bit about maybe why you want to do that. So um, the first thing you're going to need, so of course here you can see your transformer, which is just stepping down your voltage and uh, pumping up your current. Um, but in order to turn the AC, um, AC voltage coming off of the transformer into DC, you need a, uh, a rectifier. So I'll try to just pick this thing up and bring it a little closer. Um, but anyways, up in here, I'll take, actually I'll just take a picture of it and show you. But up in here we've got um, 150 amp um, three phase rectifier and why three phase? So this is actually single phase electricity, but um, it was cheaper. And the good the good thing about the three phase is um, you basically end up with an unused um, terminal. So if I were to blow up one of these um, little diodes inside the rectifier, um, I could just swap over to that unused terminal and I'd be fine. And with these <laughs> ultra super cheap rectifiers, it's not. Um, crazy to believe you're going to blow one up. Actually, so I went the 150 um, amp instead of the 100 amp. 
But what the rectifier will do is you've got your alternating current here, right? So this is a wave you might expect to see. This is your sine wave um, for your you know, 60 hertz AC that would normally be going through here. What this rectifier is doing is it's saying um, every time there's positive, send it this way, and every time there's a negative, send it this way. So what you then end up with is something more, you chop off the whole bottom of this sine wave and you have something like this. So you're, you're all um, the same polarity, but you've got these little blips basically in your thing. Um, so then what, what you do to sort of improve on that is you need a big uh, capacitor. So I've got one right here and that is a 68,000 pico or no microfarad um, cap and what that will do then is it will take all your your humps here basically and in between them, it'll it'll burst out some some voltage, so you end up with a a kind of a almost closer to a true line like you would want to see. So let's draw that maybe on a separate graph. Um, you'd have like something like this. And let's say this would be like plus 20 volts. And, and like 90 amps. So that's much, much more like what you would want to see if you're welding. Um, something else I put on here, this is optional, but highly recommended, is I put um, a bleed resistor between the two terminals of my big capacitor. And if you don't do that, what will happen is um, if you touch this to your workpiece, even without pulling the trigger, it'll spark a lot of times because this um, capacitor will be charged. So I have two um, 100 ohm resistors, 5 watt 100 ohm resistors running in parallel to, to try to bleed that off. Um, but really that's, that's all you need to do to, uh, to convert this thing and I'll, I'll show some pictures on the inside and if you don't know anything about e electronics maybe you don't want to attempt this but if you're even reasonably um, knowledgeable and you know s the safety basics um, it's really a pretty simple job um, so now what I'll do is I'll, I'll throw down a couple beads and uh, you can see what it looks like laid right there. There's a lot of heat transfer through the thick, thick steel. This stuff is probably almost a quarter inch thick, which is pretty phenomenal actually for that little welder. So for what it is for around the house, um, it, it gets some jobs done. It's not a terrible welder, but, it, but if you have one, you might want to consider doing some of those modifications that I said there. 